the graphs of f and g, so f is a parabola, g is a um, hyperbola, a point of intersection b is also the turning point of f, okay, so that's also the turning point, um, the graph of f has x-intercepts, they've shown us that, write down the coordinates of the turning point. So they've given us the equation in turning point form, so straight away you can get the coordinates from there and there, so that'll just be 1 and 8. So b is 1 and 8. Calculate the coordinates of c. c is the um, y-intercept, and so to find a y-intercept we make x 0, so you can just go plug in um, 0 for x, and that'll eventually give us 15 over 2. So we could say x is 0 and then y is 15 over 2. Next question says calculate the value of d. Okay, so that's an easy one. So we just take that one's equation and we just find a point on that equation. So we can see that it's on the point b. So that's 8 for y, 1 for x. So 8 for y, 1 for x. And so literally there it is d is 8. This one says write down the range of g. So g is the hyperbola. So for a hyperbola, the range is all y values, except if it has any asymptotes. Well, sorry, it always has an asymptote. Um, now, we can see from its equation that we know that it's 8 over x. They haven't added or subtracted anything over here. What that means is the graph has not been moved up or down, so the asymptote is the x-axis. So y just must not be equal to zero. That is the range. So it's everything except the asymptote. Okay, if they ask you for the domain of a hyperbola, it's everything except the vertical asymptote. Okay, for which values of x will this and this and this? Okay, so when you get a question like this, I want you to make like a little table, f of x, g of x. And if f of x is positive and g of x is positive, then what would happen if you multiply them? Well, that would be positive. If this one's positive and this one's negative, that would be a negative. If this one's negative, this one's positive, that will be a negative. And if this one's negative and this one's negative, that will be a positive. So they want to know when you multiply these two things together, they want it to be smaller than zero. So they want it to be a negative. So they, we're looking for these two situations over here, and we can ignore the rest. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Um, this is situation one, this is situation two. So with situation one, let's go have a look at that. We want to find out where is f of x positive. Now that means um, above the x-axis. So f of x is positive over here. You can see it's above the x-axis over there. Okay, now is there a place where g of x is negative in that same interval? Well, Yes, we can see this area here, it's negative. Okay, so, so that'll be from minus three up until this graph reaches this asymptote where x is zero. So we'll say, for this first one, we'll say um, it's when x is bigger than minus three. We can say equal to minus three because they've got equal to over here. And then smaller than, zero. We won't include zero because you're never allowed to include an asymptote, okay? So that's for this first one. Now we need to go look at scenario number two. There might be more to this answer. So now we want to look for places where f of x is negative, so that means f of x is below, like that, and in that same area is g of x positive. So is g of x above? only looking in this area and this area. So yes, we can see over there. So we can see g of x is above the x-axis, this one is below the x-axis, and so we could say or, so that'll be from five, oh no, we wanna use um, set builder, x bigger than or equal to five. Now, if you wanna use set builder notation, I mean interval notation, you could say x is an element um, from minus three up to zero, or, from five up to infinity. This question says, calculate the value of k so that h of x will not intersect the graph of g. Very easy, all you think about is the following. Um, I want you to think about will intersect. How do you find the place where two graphs intersect? You make them equal, well done. So we're gonna make h of x equal to g of x, 
okay? I know they said will not, but we can easily change that just now. So we're gonna make them equal. Um, you're gonna say minus two x plus k equals to g's equation, which is eight over x. Okay, now just multiply. Um, you can multiply this x across, or you can get a common denominator of x, and so you should eventually end up with minus two x squared plus kx equals to eight. I then want you to make a quadratic equation. Okay, now you can't solve this because it's got x and k. However, we know something called nature of roots. And we know that we can get that from b squared minus 4ac. Now, if something has, what now, now, if we don't want these two equations to intersect, then it means that this equation, which is this equation, must have no real solution. We don't want it to have a solution. So we know that to make something not have a real solution, we know that the discriminant, which is this, must be negative. And that is all we do now. We just say that this discriminant, where we'll go find b over here, a over here, and c over here, and we'll simply make it equal to smaller than zero. So um, b is k, a is minus two, and c is minus eight. How easy is that, guys? They like to ask this one. Now, k to the power of two is just k squared. If I multiply all three of these together, that's going to be four times two, which is eight. Eight times eight is 64, and it's going to be a negative. Okay, like that. Now, got to be careful here. Let's do difference of squares. So k minus eight, k plus eight. Now, we're going to do the whole critical value thing. You've got to be so careful with um, inequalities. So we're going to do the whole critical value thing, like we normally do with inequalities, where you can actually just make the equation equal to zero, okay? Um, and that's gonna give you k equals to minus eight or k equals to positive eight. Okay, now they wanna know, um, they wanna know where is this equation, which is actually a parabola, if you look at that, it's a parabola, um, and it's a happy parabola. So if I go do a number line, minus eight and eight, they wanna know where is that happy parabola smaller than zero. So smaller than zero means below the x-axis. So that would be this area here. So the answer is between minus eight and eight. So the answer will be when k is an element between minus eight and eight. If you prefer interval notation, I mean set builder, you could say bigger than minus eight and smaller than eight. So I hope you understand what we did there. They said calculate the values that the graphs will not intersect. So what we did is we pretended that we do want them to intersect. So we do the normal making them equal. We then ended up making a quadratic equation. And then we can tell that equation, hey equation, I don't want you to have any answers. Because if it does have answers, then it means the two graphs intersect. But if it doesn't have any answers, then it means they don't intersect because there's no answers. And so to, to tell it not to have any answers, you just say that the discriminant must be smaller than zero because that means no real solution. Awesome. Now, this question says, H is a tangent. Okay, now H was this tangent over here um, at point R. Okay, po a point in the first quadrant. Okay, so R is a point... Um, it's a, so, so H is a tangent, so maybe R is like somewhere over there, as an example, because they said it's in the first quadrant. Now a tangent would look something like this, okay? And we know that this thing's equation is Y equals to minus two X plus K. So we have its gradient, Aha, that's important. So it says H is a tangent to G at point R, calculate T such that Y equal, my goodness, Cal <laughs> calculate T, so that the equation of f, okay, so the equation of f now intersects g at r. Okay, if this makes your head hurt, don't worry, my head's hurting too. I'll tell you what, ignore that part completely. Just ignore that completely for now. And it just says, let's just go find the coordinates of r. They tell us that h is a tangent to g at point r. To find a tangent, what we must understand about a tangent is that it looks something like this. So if this straight line touches this parabola as a tangent, it means that it only touches it in one place. Whereas if it went like that, then it touches it in two places. So if we only want it to touch in one place, then it's a tangent. So all you do 
is to find out where two graphs touch each other, we make them equal, just like we did in the previous question. Um, G, which is eight over X, just like we did earlier. Um, let's simplify this just like we did. Take everything to the one side, just like we did, <laughs> and do that. Now, you can't solve this because once again, there's an X and a K. However, let's go back to nature of roots. Nature of roots tells us that there is a way to get two answers that are exactly the same. What did we call that? Equal. Can you remember how to make the nature of roots be equal? What must the nature of the root be? The nature of the root must be equal to zero. Ah, oh, Kevin, this is so easy. I know. So we're gonna make. So we're gonna take b squared minus four ac, and we're gonna make that thing equal to zero. Okay. And so b is k, a is minus two, and c is minus eight. And once again, we're gonna end up with um, k squared minus sixty-four. And so if we take k to the other, I mean sixty-four to the other side, you can use difference of squares if you want, but k is gonna be plus or minus eight. Now, okay, so now we know that k is plus or minus eight. Then what we can do, let's take, uh, let's take k as positive eight for now. Oh, well, it won't be negative eight. Let me explain. Remember, k is your y-intercept. So if you have a line that goes like this, your k value here would definitely not be a negative eight. It would, it would be a positive eight. What they're talking about is uh, if there was another tangent over here. Because remember, all that we said here was that the two equations must be equal. And then when we said that they must be equal to zero, all that that means is that it must be a tangent. But you can get a tangent over here as well that would also have a gradient of negative two. But here you would see it has a k value of minus eight. But we don't want that one. So we will say um, k equals to um, eight or k equals minus eight. But then this would be a non-applicable. So k is only going to be equal to 8, okay, because we're looking at the one specifically in the first quadrant. Okay, so now we know the, uh, we know the value of k. So we now know, um, we now know h's equation. h is minus 2x plus 8. And we know g's equation, 8 over x. Now we can make them equal to each other. Um, we can actually just come back to this equation over here because we've already solved up to that point. So we can just say minus 2x squared um, plus 8 because k is 8 now. There we go. Now you can um, solve this using the quadratic formula or however other method you want to use. And what we'll find is that x is 2 or, oh yeah, only, we only get x is 2. How beautiful is maths? We told this equation that we only want one answer and that answer must be the same because we said they must be equal. Ha <laughs> ha! So x is two over here. X is two at that point. Now we can easily find the y value by just plugging into either h's equation or g's equation. Um, I'm actually gonna use g's equation. So eight divided by two is four. So those are the coordinates of point R. Okay. Now, wow, what a question. They want to know what must the value of t be so that it can also intersect g at point r. So pretty much all that they want to do is t is just going to be a negative number. And all that t is going to do is it's just going to make this parabola drop, 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 drop so that it cuts the graph at point r as well. So all that we do is we just need to work out what is the y value of um, this graph f when x is 2. So then what we could do is just work out what this vertical distance is so that they can just drop, 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 drop so that it also goes through that point. That's all that they're actually saying um, with this last part over here. So when x is 2, I can plug that into this equation to find its y value. This is actually quite a good question. Then if you plug that in, you get 7.5, you get 7.5. And we said that R has the coordinates of two and four. So you just have to move this point down from 7.5 to four. So it has to move down 3.5 places. So you just have to minus 3.5 over here. So T is minus, why am I writing so skew? T, oh, it's because my writing pad was skew. <laughs> so T would be minus 3.5, or you could think of it as a minus, 7 over 2.